Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. We have an update on the Bachelorette Rachel Lindsay divorce that's happening. She's divorcing from her longtime partner of, what, four years marriage? Brian Abasolo, Dr. Abs. And Rachel Lindsay responds on her Higher Learning podcast about some of the misconceptions of what might be said out there. I doubt she's responding to my channel. I can't imagine she listens to it. But we are going to continue to try our best to get the accurate information out there, along with my opinion. You can leave an opinion in the comment section. We always appreciate those that are graceful to both sides. I'm sure it's a tough, tough process. But um, she responds and says she didn't want her dirty laundry out there. When I say she claps back, I guess that's kind of one of those terms. Like, what does it mean, clap back? Well, I think... She claps back in the sense that she says, I wish we did not have to do this. I wish we used a mediator. Of course, that would be very painless if, or at least less pain. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure divorce sucks regardless, but using a mediator, it's like you settle things out of court. You kind of get in the same room. You get the dog. I get the painting. I'll take this. You take that. And then they just never have to talk to each other ever again. Well, in this case, if you look at it, uh, Brian Abasolo filed these divorce papers. That could be a surprise to her, even though she knew they were getting a divorce. So we'll cover some of the misconceptions that might be floating around. In the end, I actually blame more than anybody, the uh, media and the, and again, like I said, I'm sharing my opinion. I'm not presenting any new information, but the media has only dripped, uh, several aspects of the motions, right? Of the divorce motions. So it's kind of hard to know exactly everything that's said when people like TMZ and People and Us Weekly just share the sexy, juicy parts. I haven't read it in its entirety. As you guys know, when we get a motion, uh, so if any of the gossip magazines want to send me a full copy, we'll take the time to read it in its entirety because that's the fair thing to do. Either way, I'm going to share this clip with you guys. And, uh, you know, we've got a full playlist. If, you know, here's one of those things. Uh, uh, whenever someone says, oh, Dave, your opinion, uh, you're gaslighting us with this. I always say this. I've covered this story now for half a year, right? And the same thing with Caitlin Bristow and Jason Tartik and uh, every other breakup that's happened out there. We cover it. Claire and Dale. I mean, the list goes on. Katie and Blake, Katie and John, Katie and uh, who else? Greg, whatever. <laughs> we cover it. That's what we do. So uh, Brian filed for divorce. Now, it was reported that she was blindsided or shocked, to use whatever words you want. And then others you know, have said, well, she couldn't have been shocked because he released these text messages, which clearly showed he was planning on filing. Now, you can still be shocked even if someone tells you exactly what they're going to do because, you know, maybe they could have, they might have been having this conversation for a year. I'm going to get a divorce. Yeah, sure you are, you jackass. You know, they go back and forth and then they make up. Like, who knows, right? Who knows? But of course, it's been pretty shocking some of the Dirty Laundry revealed. And by that, I mean, you know, she's had to reveal how much money she makes, $61,000 per month, which is an insanely healthy amount of money. So good for her. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not going to financially shame anyone. Good for her. She's offered him 10000 a month in spousal support, and he's turned that down. He wants more than that. And he's shared how much money he makes. And, uh, you know, this is the, I mean, this is the, ugly side of the court documents when you're in the public eye because we all get to look at it and go, oh, um, you know, we're, you know, who, there, there's no winner except for the lawyers, right? Anyway, all that to say, and, 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 I, and I do spend a few extra minutes prefacing this because some of your comments, like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done diving into the comment section. I responded in good faith to some comments, some of which were like, you know, calling me the R word and this and that, you know, I'm like, okay, okay, hold on a second. We're going to try to be as fair as possible, and I'm showing my work. You ever go to a math class? How did you get that answer? I showed. So if I have an opinion that, oh, there might be more to the story because he claims that there was something disingenuous happening, I'm going to dive into that. Of course, I'm going to look into that. If an audience member wants to take what I say as truth, that's on their lack of critical thinking skills when I clearly am establishing that I'm just sharing my opinion. Let's have a listen to what Rachel had to say. Can I ask a thorny question? 
Can I give you a thorny answer? Yeah, please okay. do. Obviously, we've seen a couple of things in the news recently. Yeah. Is this stressing you to fuck out? Yeah. To yeah. What, to what level? This is what I, I was like, like it high, highly because, you know, a lot of people, you know, will say are, are like, like all the stuff people are getting right now is through, you know, people picking out the court documents. And so you're reading things in black and white where, you know, there's a, a motion, there's a response, there's a reply. Um, and then people take from that. And I get it. Like, we do this. We do this, right? We don't. And the court documents get pretty sexy. And I don't mean that in a good way. She claims he makes less money than if he worked a minimum wage at a McDonald's. And then we respond as an audience going, yeah, well, but as a business owner, you do get your, like, you know, hate Trump all you want. But if he buys a... If he starts a business and it fails and he loses a billion dollars, you get to write that off. Now, he, of course, um, was convicted of uh, other tax issues. So you got to be you got to be ready to be subjected to uh, an audit, as it were. But if Brian makes 20,000, I'm just a hypothetical. If he makes $20,000 a month, but he's getting sued for medical malpractice. I'm not saying this happened. And his insurance goes up. Uh, he has to pay, he has to, you know, as an influencer, you don't have to have insurance. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't have to have, uh, you, your own health insurance, but you don't have to have medical malpractice insurance. If Brian snaps somebody's neck and they get a stroke, he's going to have to have a hefty insurance for that. So my point being that like, well, even, even though her motion says, well, he made less than minimum wage than, than you would working at McDonald's. It's like, sadly, we know a lot of people in our audience that have small businesses that are not doing well. And I wish everyone the best, but coming from a family with a small business, it's not always high profit. I don't necessarily know the full story. Like we take what we read and we, we make an opinion or an assumption off of that. But and by the way, I do appreciate, I'm going re, to rewind that and play that one more time. Rachel says, we take what we read and we make an assumption about that. And Rachel knows she'll make hard assumptions. I mean, you know, she called Rachel uh, Kirkconnell, Rachel KKK, right? She was making an assumption that Rachel Kirkconnell's racist based on all of the the, the crazy turmoil that happened in Bachelor Nation. Ver, uh, you know, she's she's allowed to have her opinion, whether you agree or disagree with that opinion. She's allowed to have that. Now, you can also have to deal with the consequences of your opinion. Like some people go, oh, you're maybe being too hard on her, this or that. People can do what they want. They can vote with their view, just like in real life we vote with our dollar on social media and content and subscribers and followers. We vote, vote with our view. I lost a, a, a non-negligible amount of subscribers this week based on my opinions on this divorce. And it's like, all right, people are allowed to do that. I'm still going to tell audience what I feel is in my heart to heart in my opinion, because I would be a fraud if I just played it safe to everybody. So Rachel understands that game, but likewise, I empathize with her. I mean, she's gone through hell and back. Let me say that one more time. Rachel Lindsay has gone through hell and back with this franchise. You know, something will come out, then she's got to uh, deactivate her Instagram account. We've covered that. Like you can imagine how tough it is on her, and and also this is the game that helps pay the big bills. The game of sharing your opinion to an audience that, in some aspects, is pretty bloodthirsty. Take from that, and I get it. Like we do this, we do this, right? We don't necessarily know the full story. Like we take what we read and we we make an opinion or an assumption off of that, but. There's a reason, like, I kept a lot of stuff private and people weren't privy to everything, good, bad, in between. But um, it kills me that my personal business, and not all true by any means, is mm. out there like that. That's, that's tough for me, that so much of my private business is out there and it's not even true. Is this the only way that this could be done or is there a different way? Well, yeah, like people mediate. I mean, like, look at um, who was it? Um, Lisa Bonet and and um, Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa. They announced and the next day it was settled. Like they handled everything probably for months, maybe even years before they brought it to the public. So I guess and trust me when I say this, I am not a voice of Brian Abasolos. I'm a voice of Dave Neal's. But my thought is Brian uh serving the papers or whatever it's whatever it's called, right? Filing to, for divorce and wanting to do this through the court system was <clears throat> in response to maybe he felt like 
the mediation wouldn't go well. I still, I still think uh, you should almost have like a required mediation. I know nothing about the divorce system, but it should almost be required to do things before the court system because the court system is so dang expensive, right? Like they're both going to piss away so much money. But sadly, the, actually, Rachel Lindsay's going to lose more money here, obviously, because she's going to be she's the breadwinner, so she's going to be probably footing the bill for a lot of this, uh, a lot of these legal uh, is, issues. But with that said, and this be this might be more to do with the Bachelor audience. For sure, Brian Abasolo has taken more of a hit than she has as far as, um, you know, audience opinion. And I understand that. It's the same reason, like we said before, Greg Grippo everyone hated when he broke up with Katie or, um, you know, the... It, you empathize with the star of the show because they're kind of the hero. So if there's a hero, you have to think, well, there must be a villain. And there doesn't have to be. Like, Brian Abasola doesn't have to be a villain. Rachel Lindsay certainly doesn't have to be a villain. It's a relationship that just didn't work out. Now, as I've said all along, clearly there must be a lot of bitterness um, from Brian's camp if he wants to make his... Uh, you know, make, make sure he gets his fair share. But isn't that the fair thing to do? The judge will decide what's fair. I think the issue is more so that it's being aired out in public. Um, but I almost guarantee on paper, Brian will get more out of this because it went through the court system than he would have with a mediator. Um, my thought with a mediator is she probably would have offered him, I mean, who knows, right? I, I don't want to speak for her, but you know, by forcing this in the public eye, you make more. The collateral damage of that is an audience that is not going to be happy and think, yo, he's taking money from a woman and, you know, this and that. But um, hey, the judge is going to do what's fair and what's fair is fair. Even that Bobby girl from social media, Altoff. they announced Bobby Altoff. Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. had settled. Like you, but Bobby was a rising star in the social media world, and her husband was like a tech executive. So the examples of the people like Jason Momoa and his wife, who's a, also a celebrity, the example of the people that made this work before going public were examples where they had a good thing going for them, a clean break can easily do these things behind closed doors so hmm. you know it's just not the way things are done yeah. and it's it's like yeah it's it's extremely stressful it's extremely stressful are we almost at the end of it or we have a long road ahead i have no idea she has no idea and i i believe her in her voice when she says dang this sucks and it must suck it must suck for her that people like me talk about this um, but that's the part of the, and I hate to say, well, by all means, I'm not saying you're asking for it. That's the part of what makes her so worth so much money when it comes to brand deals and influencer gigs and things like that. Not because Rachel Lindsay was a lawyer, although that's a great skill that she has now because she's a fantastic, uh, podcast host. She's really great, but it's because she's got that equity that makes her life interesting. And as much as I would hate it, and trust me, I would, if I went through something and people online wanted to talk about it, I would have to say, well, they want to talk about it because I've done a good enough job to become known to an audience. And now my personal business is interesting to them. Uh, I would be able to decide whether or not I wanted to respond to them. And Rachel can as well. Rachel's got the power here in that she's got a much larger, much larger social media and podcast platform. I would argue that when the two years are said and done after she pays Brian whatever amount the judge agrees to, I would argue that after that, I would put money on her making a hell of a lot more money than him. Because... You don't always make a lot of money being a chiropractor. You only make, I mean, what do you say? Let's say you charge a hundred bucks an hour, right? You can't have, I mean, you could have employees and make money off of them and everything and grow your business that way. But if you're an influencer, like, like this video I'm making right now, I don't know what it's going to make a couple hundred bucks, but if it goes super vile, viral, it could make a lot more. And I didn't have to work any harder. That's kind of like the world of influencing. It's like, she's able to make a whole lot more money than she would if she was say like a lawyer with her own billable hour. Does that make sense? So I totally empathize with Rachel. And like I said, it's all going to work itself out in the court system. And all I can pledge to do, and I'm going to say this one more time for the people in the back of the room, all I will continue to pledge to do is be fair. I still have the opinion that there's more to the story. Otherwise, I don't think Brian would be going so hard in the court system to say, nope, 16K a month. If 
he's being unreasonable and nothing else comes out as to why he was really trying to force her hand and rack up the legal expenses, I'll call him out if that's the case. Uh, the dribbling of information through the court system, I wish it would just be like one of those, well, say what you want to say. But I'll say this, if Brian, again, these are all wild, like all the conspiracies about like getting piped in information, they just like, they're so meritless. I'm so busy as a, as a dad right now doing my things to think that I'm like pulling strings with people. And someone even commented, they said, oh, Dave must be pimping for Brian because Brian gave him a free chiropractor session. You guys are ridiculous. I can afford a chiropractor session. <laughs> but I did think Brian did a really good job. And um, I am skeptical of chiropractors, although I have been to plenty of them. I've got a terrible neck issue that only chiropractors have helped out with. That's a story for another day. But I will say this. I, I just believe there's more to it. But I can understand why if there is a nuclear code nuclear, nuclear, did I pronounce it right? If there's a nuclear code, Brian wouldn't press that. He would only threaten to press that. You know what I mean? So if there's something that Rachel doesn't want out there because it would hurt her business, um, knowing Brian knows that would probably incentivize Rachel to just pay what he's asking for and move on with their lives. What I would suggest they should have done is air that out with mediator and... Maybe he could sign an NDA, be like, all right, I'll pay you this amount, sign an NDA that we never talk about this again. You know what I mean? And I'm sure he'd be like, okay, fine. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure in good faith, they both want to move on from this. Maybe I'm living in a fantasy world, but I just feel like there's more to it. And that's where I stand. That's not a knock on Rachel. It's not a knock on Brian. Those are my opinions. I'd love to know yours. Keep it kind to both of them. As I always say, the Yellowstone effect, which I've coined the Yellowstone effect, which is if you ever go to Yellowstone, stay in your car, look at the beautiful tea that you see out there. Don't address them. Don't DM them. Don't slide into their DMs and just move on with your life. Take it for whatever entertainment news value it is. Uh, uh, because if you do get out of the car, you might get gored. All right. We'll be back with more content right after this. <laughs> 